It's one of the most acclaimed westerns ever. It's Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. What makes this movie so great? Let me give you as many reasons as I can why coming up next. Might have thought the Western was dead in the 1980s. There weren't very many Hollywood Westerns made, but here comes, well, Dances with Wolves in the late 80s, which won a Best Picture, and then Unforgiven by Clint Eastwood, 1992 movie, also winning a Best Picture at the Oscars. This is one heck of a great Western, very complicated and extremely interesting, both in terms of the tradition, the literary filmic tradition of Westerns, and its overall ideas, symbols, themes, and all the great art in involved in this movie. Was that what it was like in the old days, Will? Everybody riding out, shooting. Smoke all over the place, folks yelling, bullets whizzing by. I guess so. Now, Clint Eastwood acted in this as the main character, William Mooney, who is an old-time outlaw, retired. His wife has died. He's got two kids, a farm. They live remotely. And he's called back into duty. Well, duty is being an outlaw. Uh, for a particular job in which he could get a share of $1,000, which is a lot of money back in the 1880s, at least maybe a year's worth of wages, and he desperately needs it because his farm seems to be falling apart. Now, Eastwood also directed this movie, and it's written by David Webb Peoples, which is a literary movie because it's got bookends on either side of the movie, the beginning and the ending, which have sort of a literary beginning, literary ending with interesting sunlit shots. So to me, while the movie signals that it's sort of pulpy and that's Western and it's got literal pulp novels in it, actually old time Westerns from the 1870s and 80s and the characters are interacting with those kinds of literary texts. You also have this high art, which the movie itself is. I think Eastwood's direction is downright Spielbergian in this movie. By that I mean, the blocking in all these scenes, the placement of all things in the camera, particularly the most important things, such as the actors and the guns, is really, really interesting, especially the way he connects a bunch of different shots. And in each scene, he sets the mood, the tone, the feel, and gives you the ideas of what the characters are feeling by where he places them within the frame and how he cuts them together. This movie is peppered with great acting. Gene Hackman as the bad guy sheriff. You have Morgan Freeman, the friend of William Mooney. You have a turn by Richard Harris as English Bob, another outlaw in the movie. And with these four characters and just them alone, you have a movie that's about older age, particularly older age men, not just in the West, but in general. And the question with William Mooney, what do you do with your life now? What's the point of living life now after you've been an outlaw and a rebel figure for so long? What's the purpose and meaning of life? And you have four different characters who have different answers to that question in their older age. I see that Wikipedia calls this a revisionist Western. Is it subversive or revisionist? I'm not sure. I think it's a classic Western, but the main character is not a heroic figure, not even anti-hero. He's downright low, and literally the movie puts him low. He's falling down off pigs into their own dung and he falls off his horse and he is low in the frame several several times this character thus is a low life literally he's chosen to go away from his family and his farm and go into you know being an outlaw actually being a murderer for hire that's his ethical choice to begin the movie which is very troubling and then he's brought low repeatedly over the course of the movie now before we get into the conflicts between humans in this movie i think nature is the dominant force in this movie one it gets the plot rolling and it keeps the plot rolling and two it is a threat to kill these men basically at every turn at the beginning of the movie we already have eastwood suffering because his wife has died of smallpox then his pigs are infected, many of his pigs threatening his family and his family farm. Thus, he must go, he thinks, and try to go get part of this $1,000. And so you have two tiny little viruses taking over and forcing big, tough men to do things maybe they don't want to do or things that are dangerous. Later in the movie, you have rain, you have a thunderstorm. It makes, makes Eastwood sick at one point. And that rain and the thunder kind of control everything. And it is the coincidence that makes things happen for Eastwood to show up in the town sick and being harassed by the Gene Hackman sheriff character, it is because of the rain. What's my point? That nature is dominant. This is a, I think, naturalistic movie in the, tra in the tradition of naturalism, literary natu naturalism, 
which w in which nature is the force that controls and makes people do things, especially big guys with guns. But then there are the men who are tough, and the Gene Hackman characters answer the question, what's the point of older age? By answering, I want to be a big fish in a small pond. This is a very common phenomenon. I've seen it a lot, where people in their little spheres of existence want to rise to the top and dominate, be all powerful. You could say that the Gene Hackman character rules according to Augustine's uh, idea of the libido dominandi, the desire to dominate other people and be their ruler or their king. He's just in a mere little town, but what does he do? He lynches the black man, played by Morgan Freeman. He's a misogynist, he hurts women. He may be an unjust judge, and he's definitely pro-gun control. This is a very strong idea in this movie that the sheriff and the town are forcing people to give up their guns at the edge of town and they will harm you if you don't even read the sign and do so yourself by your own volition. If you were to really simply think about this movie and its types, you know, the Eastwood character is this drifter outlaw going into a town and the town is misogynistic, it's racist, it's pro-gun control <laughs> all three of those things combined plus the government the gene hackman characters can cahoots with the writers and the media or the literati played by the character who is with english bob at first but then goes over to the side of gene hackman and maybe writing about him you have the media and the government and cahoots and so here comes the single individual eastwood and giving his maybe his libertarian uh, ideas he is the one who's going to take them all out, maybe, or that's the threat in the movie. Now, I don't love that reading the movie because I think nothing is all that great in the movie. And I, th I think that's part of the reason why it makes it complex and more interesting than traditional Westerns is because everything is morally complicated and very troubling in this movie. You have the prostitutes who are clearly wronged. One of them is cut up very bad by a nasty man, and they put a $1,000 bounty on two men not just one, but two men, in order to, you know, get revenge. They want more than an eye for an eye justice. They think they don't get what's right by the eyes of the sheriff, which is to have these two men trade in ponies in, later in the year to their owner, who is the saloon keeper, who is a nasty guy and a misogynist himself. But you think about the prostitutes, they want more than they ought to get, which is the woman's been cut up so all of them are going to hire a murderer and pay him a boatload of money, a ton of money in this day and age. And the question is, do they even have it? There's some questions about that in the middle of the movie, at least. But that's very troubling. The second thing is, only one man did this, but they end up blaming two men for it. And the second guy seems to be pretty kind. He seems to have a charitable heart while he's associated with his nasty friend who cut up the prostitute. But does he deserve the kind of... Uh, revenge or justice that all of them are seeking in this film. Obviously, the third thing is that both the Clint Eastwood and Morgan Freeman characters, along with their younger friend, are out for blood and they're going to get paid as murderers. They're basically hitmen. You think of a mob movie and the disturbing things about hitmen and professional assassins, it's basically what they're doing in this movie. And the Morgan Freeman character gives up his farm. He's retired of farming a la Cincinnatus type thing, and he has forsaken his wife. Also, Clint Eastwood forsakes his very young children in this movie to go off. It's utilitarian or maybe pragmatic. They want, they need money, they want it, but it's also very troubling that they're gonna go murder somebody in order to get money. Then you have the sheriff character who is at times maybe in his rights to enforce the law. And I say that hesitatingly because I believe he's by far the worst character in the movie, but he may be legally and maybe at, in a couple moments ethically correct. However, he's an extremely nasty person. And is he an unjust judge? Yes, probably. Is he want the wrong punishment? Yes, probably. Is he misogynist? Yes. And so he's associated with all these nasty things that a dominating mayor or sheriff type as he is which then leads us to the classical Western solution, which is to go take him out and give order to the town. Well, is the town really ordered in the end? The stranger comes to town and brings perhaps just chaos. And that's what ensues in the movie. 
I have wondered if then in the end this movie is nihilistic in the tradition of a number of westerns up to this point, but particularly an idea system that perpetuates through a number of westerns and a number of movies thereafter. The Coen brothers dealing with this question of nihilism. What's the point of living? What's the point of reality? Maybe the purpose of life is nothing. Meaning is constructed by humans and thus there's nothing left or and thus nothing actually dominates life itself and there's nothing after death they consider that i don't know they adopt it but it's in true grit as i've argued in another video and a number of other westerns that come after this movie so this is in the tradition of and he dedicates this to sergio leone you can find bits and pieces or maybe nihilistic streets not completely in his westerns particularly i think the good the bad and the ugly which stylistically glamorizes violence, I think. And so this movie is asking the question, what's the purpose of William Mooney's life and towns like this and the purpose of America? A very interesting shot in this movie where near the showdown scene, Eastwood has an American flag behind him. What's he doing with that flag? What's the political message or messages of this movie? Here are these questions come up in shots like this. Now, I'm one to think that Westerns are actually, in a way, riffs on the Book of Judges from the Bible. This doesn't hold for all Westerns, but because it's in time and a place that's fairly unsettled, things are in flux, and the classic line from the Book of Judges that everyone does right in his own eyes, sort of a libertarian sentiment, but also a condemnatory sen sentiment that there's no justice, or there's limited justice, or it's personal justice in the land and no law or law and order. Well, a Western like this feels to me like the book of Judges or a scene or story from it with some pretty awful despicable stuff in it. And I think William Mooney's kind of sort of a Samson character. Not quite, but he's going into the town and he's hurt, he's harmed, and yet he's going to take them down. He's brought low. He doesn't have a lot of power in this movie. Why? Not because of a Delilah that's cut his hair, but because he's lost his wife on the one hand. Two, he's old. And three, these prostitutes are sending him on a mission that may be not necessarily emasculating him, but in a Delilah-like way, they're controlling the situation. And he's forced into, you know, taking the sheriff out and taking the town out. There's, I, I don't think this is exactly like Samson, but there are little hints of that story, I think, throughout this, this movie. Just little hints, which it makes this movie interesting and like the Book of Judges. There are a thousand things more to say. I really think everything, the, the directing, the writing by David Webb Peoples, the acting... And this movie in the tradition of Westerns is one of the more complex, morally, ethically, spiritually, psychologically, legally that you can think of. All the different aspects of life, this movie comp brings them together and complicates them. That's one reason why I like it very strongly. And I think it's aged gracefully or aged very well. And so it's going to be rewatchable, I think maybe forever, but at least for the next few decades. What do you think of Unforgiven? Let us know in the comments and please subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much. Have a great day.